Now this spinner was quite a bit different than any spinner I've tried to make before. Um, I'm going to see if I can walk you through it. All right, so I started with the sphere. Uh, I believe it's about 30 millimeters in diameter. And then I laid out a sketch on that. That's just the 21.9 millimeters, which is what I use for the bearing. That's 22 millimeters to make sure it's a nice tight fit when it's complete. So I laid that out. Uh, then I extruded a hole through that so that the bearing has a space to go. Uh, let's enlarge this a little. Okay, then I created another sphere right over here. And I laid out a sketch on that. And that is a 21 millimeter diameter. And then uh, just a, another circle that's larger than the sphere itself. Um, this is so I can extrude everything except for the center part, which I removed from here. So I'm basically taking this piece and creating it separately. And I'll show you why in a second. So I have this. So now I have those two parts. Now this would fit inside this with um, less than a millimeter to spare. So that's a nice tight fit. So let's go to the next step. Then I create a cotangent plane, I believe is what it's called. And then on top of that, I placed a sketch. Uh, it's basically a rectangle. So I'm cutting out the section where the bearing will go. So the bearing itself is seven millimeters in height. And I'm cutting out a nine millimeter chunk because I want that one millimeter spacer above and below the bearing uh, just to keep everything seated. So after I do that sketch, I go ahead and extrude that out and I have those two halves. What I do is move those around. And then I create another sketch. right here. Uh, now this is a seven millimeter and this is for the threads that will be placed and then the nine millimeters which is um, an overlap because the actual bearing is about eight millimeters for the hole and nine millimeters lets you write on that bit of an edge outside of the bearing of the center of the bearing. So once that's done I extruded up the spacer section and then I went in and cut out that. That allows me to go to the next step where I create the threads. Now that's an actual option. You just go in, create thread, um, you select where and make sure you select modeled so that it actually models in the threads and doesn't just display them um, using basically an image. It physically models the threads into place so that you know what you're getting. Okay, so once that's done, I went on to the next and I created another sketch on this side. So I have where the threads will be, the inner spacer which actually fits inside the bearing the hole inside the bearing and then the outer spacer which will sit on top of the area here's a bearing so this is the thread itself which is through the center then the first set of circles this little bit right here actually fits in the space between the threads and the inner diameter of that wheel and then this section right here where I'm pointing with the cursor actually sits flush on top of this part of the bearing so that it rides on top okay so once that's done I extrude out the outer spacer let me resize this I extrude the screw I create the screw, 
the, the threaded section of that rod and that will fit in perfectly into this. Then I need to create the wings. Well, assuming it will let me move. There we go. Okay. So this is designed with a single spline and a line. So the spline comes around, there's a point here, 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 and here. And that creates the spline. And I don't believe any changes were made to the spline um, after the natural placement. Uh, just a line was added. Then I added three 6.2 millimeter circles so I can extrude the holes out for the quarter inch bearings that go into those places. So let me go ahead and extrude that whole piece out. And it's a nice clunky, chunky piece. Uh, do some fillets, smooth that over almost completely. Uh, this is almost a circle and it's close enough for this design anyway. So the next step is another sketch. And this sketch is actually on the face or on the inside of the sphere. Uh, this is a seven millimeter circle and that fits with the size of this wing so that the wing can be placed inside. Let me stop that sketch. Then I extrude that hole all the way through that, making the body complete, the wing complete, and then one more extrusion is this section right here that I had forgot about when I was originally designing it. And that is that inner spacer into the bearing. And that's the complete thing. It actually took quite a bit of time to think it all through. But as you can see, when it's in this state, it's a pretty simple design overall. Um, just required a little bit of thought as far as how everything's going to fit together. Um, to actually put it together, uh, the bearing needs to be placed inside the body, tap down into the center point, and probably making a plastic spacer to hammer that in would probably be the easiest route. Um, then your upper and lower caps simply screw in place, and the wings uh, can simply be glued in place. Uh, if you're using ABS, I'd definitely use the acetone, otherwise uh, super glue or an epoxy for PLA would be perfectly fine to hold the wings in place. Now you can use whatever color scheme you want and since it is split out into multiple pieces you can have this in multiple colors or you can always go in and spray paint or do any kind of aging that you'd like to it to, as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the finished product. So to make it easier to place the bearing in the center I went ahead and designed a quick STL that's also available in the link in the description. And this allows you to start the bearing in and then just stick this on top and hammer this down and you'll get the bearing basically dead center where it needs to be as long as you're using uh, 608 bearings. Okay, so once the bearing is in place you just fit this together Screw this down. You have that little spinning ball. You hammer in the ball bearings into the wings. And then those just fit in the sides. And with a little bit of super glue. So let me go ahead and do that real quick and then I'll show the two examples. Okay, those have been glued down. Uh, so this one was finished with a uh, bright spray paint, a bright gold spray paint. And this was finished with the Rub and Buff. I believe it was an antique gold or gold leaf. I think it was gold leaf. So you can do whatever type of finish you're looking for. Uh, of course, you can print the wings and anything else that you would like. Uh, it actually spins quite well, considering it's the first one of this style of design I've tried. Uh, you can't spin them on the desk, obviously, because there's no flat spot. This one spins a little bit worse because it has, uh, I think it's a total of about five or six layers of paint because I was trying different techniques. And this one is strictly the rub and buff. 
um, with a single coat of matte finish uh, clear coat. And it doesn't spin really long. If you get a good spin on it, you're looking at about 30 second spin. There's quite a bit of wobble. Uh, these are ABEX 7 bearings, so these aren't going to spin as well as the 9s that I normally use. But overall, uh, it's a different type of design. Looks good and gives you an idea of the types of things you can design. So until next time, keep designing.